What's up, everybody? I am going to be tying a very simple sculpin fly that a couple people on Instagram have asked me, um, both in comments and private messages, and I got one email. Um, it's very simple. You only need two actual materials, a helmet, um, and a hook, and some thread. It's very simple. It looks pretty good. It's got a really nice profile when it's wet. Um, so let's get a tie, uh, tie in here. What you're going to need is uh, a Magnum rabbit strip for the one that I posted. It's actually a gold variant from Hairline. It's got uh, kind of a two-tone color. It's very natural looking. I think it looks really good for sculpting patterns. Um, what I like to do is uh, cut all my pieces out before I tie. It just makes it a lot more efficient. Uh, so first you're going to want your body and your tail piece. And uh, what I do to measure that is I take my hook. It doesn't really matter what hook you use as long as it's a fairly similar style. This is a uh, A-Rex Hooks uh, Light Stinger size 4 which Hairline now distributes them. They're very nice hooks. You guys should check them out. I like them a lot. As you can tell, all my videos basically have them. So <laughs> Anyway, what I do is I take a flat piece and I taper it. But before I taper it just like this, you have to measure it. So what I do is I measure from the high I take one, two shank lengths of the hook and I cut it. And I trim it to like a a fine taper. Just looks a lot natural in the water. So anyway, then you're gonna want to cut some fins out, which is just more rabbit. I cut into like a little triangle shape on one end. It's probably uh, what is that, like a quarter inch thick of hide. You get two of those. Then you're going to need one more piece, just like the fin, but you leave it square on the end. I'll cut it to a taper. You're also going to need some ice dub, uh, preferably a lighter color because sculpins have basically white belly. So, anyway, forgot to mention for a size 4 hook, use a size small sculpin helmet from Flyman Fishing Company. Uh, it's a great little product. Uh, it comes with little packages of eyes. you got to put them in yourself, but that's really not a big deal. Um, if you do a bunch of these at once, put the eyes in. It looks kind of creepy because there's a bunch of like little heads just laying around your table, but <laughs> maybe it's just me. Uh, that's a pretty cool product because it's, it's weighted on the belly, so it'll actually flip your hook upside down to keep it weedless. Um, I'm sure most of you have probably seen that. This is a 140 denier thread. You'll start it probably three or four uh, hook eyes back from the hook eye because you're going to want to leave some room for the helmet itself. Uh, right here is where you're going to want to add some extra weight if you you need it. Um, I don't. I like to cast these little little dudes on a uh, six weight, so you don't want too heavy. The helmet adds quite a bit of weight. Work your thread back to the point of the hook. Take your ice dub. Uh, if you cut a corner off of the bag, it's a lot easier to come out straight. Um, just like that. Get your little pinch straight. Roll over in your fingers and get a, one solid piece. Midpoint of the hook. Put it right on top of the hook shank. Wrap it a couple times. Fluff it all out. Fold it back over itself. Catch it. And work your way back. Now find your little comb and you can brush through that. Just get all these stuff out of the way. <coughs> now you're going to create a decent little size dubbing loop. Um, work it to the tie in point. Wrap over it to close the loop gap. And bring your thread, thread forward to where you started. Now that you have your dubbing loop, you get your Dubbing with blister and get that ready. Get more of your ice dub. You want to be fairly sparse here because this is more or less just to cover up the bare rabbit on the bottom of the fly. So you get about three or four pinches, about equal size, and spin it up. The reason I spin it in a dubbing loop versus just dubbing on in standard noodles, 
when you brush it out, it's uh, it's going to look more like this. Um, versus kind of a, a wild looking appearance. It's, it's more controlled. So go ahead and wrap this on. It doesn't have to be, you know, super nice or anything. You're just going to cover it up anyway with the rabbit. So work your way forward and catch it off. I really like this uh, Stonfo dubbing twister I've been using because you can turn it sideways like this and, and wrap your material over the hook. It's actually a really nice convenient feature once you get used to it. First I didn't really care for it that much but now I use it all the time. So you can see how that looks. It's, it's a lot looser looking versus just a dubbing noodle. So at this point I like to turn my hook upside down get your tapered piece of tail slash body. Um, you want to measure this before you poke a hole through it. So you want this piece to land right where your thread is, which is right about there. So put your finger where you want the rabbit or the uh, the hook to stop, which is right here at this point on the rabbit. Save your spot and poke a hole right in the middle of the hide. Now if you go fairly slowly versus fast, you won't create a giant hole back here, and that uh, it, it lasts a little bit longer. So take your uh, fly out of ice, work your uh, rabbit to get to the position that you really want it, and you can put it back in. Now grab your end of the rabbit, work your fluff, clean it up a little bit, and get it into position. Your tag end should be right here where your thread is, which is just great. And tie it off a little bit shorter than I need to be, but that's okay. And create a little ball. <coughs> Catch it. Now at this point, flip it again. Grab a uh, Velcro brush or something similar and just kind of brush all this ice stub out and backwards. It kind of creates a nice little shiny light colored underbody and sort of hides the rabbit that's the skin that's underneath. It kind of makes it look like it's one solid piece. Um, so bring your thread back to where you just stopped. And now you're going to want to put the, uh, the fins on. And what I do for that is when you taper your rabbit, you're going to have like little pieces left over with still some fur on it. Just pull some of that fur off, um, and you're going to make a, a dubbing noodle or rope of the rabbit fur. And what this is going to do is, is help keep your fins separated, um, especially in the water, because, well, you don't want them to be all smushed up together into the body. So just create a little decent little ball there. Grab one of your fins. Uh, it's the triangle shaped uh, quarter inch piece. Let's start on this side I guess. And put your tapered side right in front of that ball. Just like that. And wrap over it a couple times. just like this and you can do the other side you see my light flickering, I'm sorry it's the other light, the professional light I have is it's way too bright to do videos I don't still not uh, nearly quite good with videos as I need to be but I honestly wasn't planning on doing money <laughs> So, I haven't really invested any time or money into it. So, now that you got your wings or your fins on, they're nice and separated looking. Now, you still have the hide showing and kind of a gap in the body, and that looks just really terrible. So, that's where this other piece comes into play. Um, you just kind of, this is, I got this sort of from my meat wild fly. You kind of put it over as like an overwing. Um, and you just wrap over it and this is going to do actually three things one is going to hide the uh, the junction of the fins 
Two, it's going to bulk up the body. And three, it's going to bulk up right behind the head, uh, which you actually need this bulk for the, uh, the Flyman helmets. Uh, it gives it something really nice to, to grab onto. Um, as you can see, it's, it's still somewhat messy, which that's fine. We're going to take care of that. Go ahead and get rid of your thread, just whip finish, or even if you don't know how to whip finish, you could literally just put some super glue on your thread. Because it's going to be covered up anyway. Next, grab one of your sculpin helmets that you made previously uh, with your eyes already on. If you put the eyes on before this, it's way easier um, versus trying to put these little tiny eyes on this fly. Um, grab some super glue. Uh, you really don't need a lot, like at all. So just drop a little bit on both sides, just like this. Sure, you put the helmet on in the right direction. Um, go ahead and work your materials around. Slide the helmet over, just like this, and just work it backwards until you can expose the uh, the hook eye, just like that. So, <laughs> at this point, you could totally fish it. Um, the glue is going to take a minute to dry, of course, but uh, what I like to do is to even further, further secure this. Uh, as I just usually it should be probably match the color of the mask. I just don't have that color thread, so just put a few uh, thread wraps right in front of that to secure it even further, and uh, go ahead and whip finish. What that's going to do is prevent the helmet from flying off the hook. Even though you did super glue it, it's just another precaution that you could take. Now, if you lick your fingers, it's, it's going to be easier to do this next part. So, go ahead and separate your fin material from the body and the uh, overwing that you put on there for bulk. Uh, you kind of want it three visible pieces like this. Um, now, what we're going to do is make it you want to keep it shaped in the water, and what you're going to use is some some UV resin, which I don't even know where my open bottle is, so let's use another one. I got a bunch of this. I use the uh, Deer Creek uh, Diamond Fine Flexible. I like the flexible because it, it allows the material to move and it doesn't crack, um, which I think is very important. This is a very versatile resin. Um, so what I do is grab your fin, put just a little hair right at the base of the helmet and the fin, kind of just like that, and it, and set your angle that you want it. Doesn't take much, doesn't take much time at all either. Set that side, do this side just the same. This does a couple of things. Uh, it's going to fill in that little really tiny gap behind the head and the fins which you can't barely see but it fills it in when it's wet it's going to be pretty apparent that's what I'm talking about um, I like to do just a little little touch right behind the head to fully seal this head to the fur and control the direction so it doesn't foul all over the hood point just like that. Use your finger to kind of smear it in. And there it is. Now flip the fly over. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Fill in right where the little holes are. You can work a little bit slower than I'm doing. I just want to kind of get it over with. And fill in that little hole right there. This also keeps the underbody nice and flat, so it'll ride in a river correctly. Um, nice and smooth on the bottom. So, anyway, as you can see, that's the bottom, that's the side, and that's the top. It's actually a very quick, very simple fly design, um, and this thing it looks really, really good in water as well as it does dry, I suppose. But go ahead and give it a try, guys. Had a lot of success with this. A lot of people I've tied these flies for catch some serious fish on them, so.